there's a couple of tweets posted above. Uh, one is the session from two weeks ago, and the other is a poster I make to kind of promote the writing community of Twitter spaces that occur. I've been doing them every two weeks as well, just because there are so many over the course of a two week period that it was tough to fit a whole month on there. So I kind of broke it into two week segments just to make it a little bit more manageable and legible for anyone that shares it out or reads it and stuff. And that, that's been pretty cool. It's definitely, I have a Twitter DM group for the people that do writing spaces on Twitter. So, um, you know, try and build up some sense of camaraderie there. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. I talked to Chris about potentially doing that for like the film community or the, I don't know, film three community as well. Might, you know, maybe that'll come back around at some point in the meantime. Uh, at least I've got that one going so he can kind of see how it works. And if he wants to take the initiative on that, which would make way more sense than, than me, I'd be happy to put the, the flyer together just so it, you know, it's just, it's pretty easy. You know, I just get dates and times from people and list the hosts. It's not too involved. So it doesn't take more than, I don't know, 10, 10 minutes to put it together. What's up nuclear. How are you? Um, you know, this is a writing space. I know you're a writer. If there's anything you're looking to promote, feel free to post it up into the nest. Or if there are some things that you want to chat about, you know, this is pretty conversational, pretty chill. Hey, I'm, I'm doing all right. Um, no, nothing, nothing really. Um, I want to promote, um, we are trying to get boss up on the moon with Copernic uh, space and uh, uh, Carla and everything. So that's that's new dreams, right? Popping up all the time with this this thing. Mm. But I, I just kind of came in just out of curiosity what was being talked about and stuff. Yeah, I mean this is this is pretty free range in general. Um, you know, occasionally it is question and answer for folks that have problems with stuff. Other times it's just kind of, uh, I guess hot topic oriented in terms of whatever news is out or tools. Um, definitely talk about AI stuff. It is really, you know, just about hanging out with folks that do writing, uh, or put out books or, or, or are authors in any capacity really, it's not, um, it's not really like thematic in any real sense and there's not necessarily a task. So it, it just goes wherever we all like it to go. Did Karen have a space last night or did I m- miss it? Oh, she had a space, uh, this morning. Uh, she was being interviewed about web three French on chain and, uh, and balls up and, uh, it's pretty good. Um, a lot of, a lot of questions about what's, uh, what's going on and the whole team was there too. So oh, very cool. Yeah. I'll have to look for that. Cause I didn't see, she usually does Tuesday nights, right? Uh, yeah. The, the weekly space is usually on, uh, Tuesday nights. Um, we, we, we are in talks, uh, with like, um, pigeons and stuff. Um, so, so that we can bring back the, uh, was it the the table read spaces mm-hmm. for like certain scripts and stuff? That's cool. Um, cause, Cause right now we're, we're at a point where like a lot of our, our, our scripts and stuff that we've written, um, you know, they can't be public yet. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so that means, okay, we can't have audition spaces for that and we don't have time to pump out scripts for that stuff, which we know like the audition spaces were really big, uh, um, like last year and everything. And, uh, um, but we know people, people like, like to have that come back because it's, it's interactive. It's fun. People can, can act and everything. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I know that you're mostly on that side of writing, like script writing, right? Screenplay stuff. Yeah. Right now, um, 
I'm, I'm, I'm mostly just working on the balls up, uh, um, screenplay. Um, like I, I haven't even had time to these past few years to really work on my, my third poetry book. Oh, that's cool. I haven't even had time to really run the ads and everything for it. So it, it really shows <laughs> when I log into my account, um, that I, I definitely had not been, a supporting my books with ads and stuff um which you know that's that's pretty essential when when you're 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 kind of your your own self-published uh um person Mm -hmm. um but you know uh, to me it's like it's like a trade-off right you know what 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 am i prioritizing you know i'm prioritizing this this movie script and trying to do something where my writing is is a lot more i guess um, it's part. It's more part of a, a team in a way, right? Because I mean, I'm writing the script on my own. A lot of the editing is more kind of self done, because that's just the way I am as a writer. But at some point, you know, it's it's going to be read by people, and it's it's going to have a little bit of input. But also, you know, you're going to have a whole team that's working on making the script come to life, and that's where it really starts to become a, a team effort, like all my books i mean yeah i I went out i asked other marines what what they would like me to write about and stuff but for the most part you know and it it was it was really just it was really just me um um, that that's writing that so it's so i i thought you know doing something that, that affects a team and stuff like that's uh but that's something that was a little bit more important to me uh, these past few years. So I, I, I'm, I'm all right with the massive dip in book sales. That's, that's okay. Um, like the books are still up. They're not going anywhere. Right. And, um, and the good thing I, I think too, is like with self publishing, um, you, you have like a lot of like dead books or dead series. They make comebacks. Um, because of like, then other stuff you may have worked on, people get interested again. Yeah, and um, I, you know, in traditional publishing, I know they 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 usually have this 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 time frame in the beginning where it has to make all the sales in the beginning, or that's it is dead. They cut the cord, and it doesn't matter. And they may even take it off store shelves. Now, you know, yes, you still want to pump in the beginning, and you know that's ideal. But it's not exactly the end of the world if that um, that doesn't quite uh, work out. And sometimes it's it's about stacking books, right? Hundred percent. Because yeah, it, like like people have told me like like they didn't take off to maybe three or four books depending on the genre, and then at the and and other people, you know, so, sometimes you know they they wrote maybe eight to ten books. And then that's when it really started to add up and they started seeing um, everything kind of, kind of pay back. Let me ask you this. I don't stress over it. Yeah. What ad platforms do you prefer or have you found the best results from? I I found the best from Amazon. Interesting. I mean, that makes sense if that's where your books are, right? Yeah, that's where my books are. And, um, um, my books have been in 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 some Barnes and Nobles. It's been in in some Walmart stores and stuff. Um, but overall, most of the sales are on Amazon, and most of the sales, believe it or not, are not digital sales. I yeah. my digital digital sales are almost zero, and it's the paperback sales that that happen for me. Same for me. And, and I think part of it too is also the genre that 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 may um, affect it to some degree as well, because mine is poetry, so so I do see the connection because poetry is a very kind of touchy kind of feel kind of thing, right? And so that that makes sense um, with 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 the audience that that's that's on there. Um, I, I I do know like there's some genre, genres where um, y- you may see more likely to see more kind of ebook sales. So I, I really pay attention to that. Yeah. I would say fiction in that side of things for me, um, actually like audiobooks have been the 
strongest. And it's kind of odd because some of the material that I put out is highly photographic. (laughs) So it's basically me reading, you know, the, the editorial, but you know, none of the, none of the pictures are, are in the audio book, um, which is fine. You know, it, it, uh, it's still, still moving, but kind of surprising when people prefer to listen to something that is so oriented towards the the images that accompany the text but yeah, it's fine with me it may, maybe you just have really good descriptions and um you, you just sound very good when you read it might be you know yeah hard telling yeah I, i'm glad that i'm glad that you mentioned amazon you know i don't know that i've ever tested their ad platform for my books and Maybe this will be the impetus to to give that a shot. So you have three poetry books out. No, I I, I have two. Okay. And so and so yeah, I, I'm definitely at the point where if I I put out a few more books, then then yeah, I I, I and I I really push them, then then yeah, I think I, I would I would start to see things start to flip because I was I was breaking even and making some um some money which I thought, okay, that's, that's actually very good considering I was paying all this money to travel and everything. And, and, uh, uh, for these, these, uh, these award ceremonies, all this stuff, that's not, that's not too bad. And, and, yeah. and then considering it's poetry, poetry is tough. It's so oversaturated. Right. And like the big people that write poetry, they have a particular formula, which I, you know, I'm not going to knock them on it, but, but at the same time, like, like I, I've looked at the books and like, 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 like some of these big, big people, they, they, they know what they're doing. They write the same exact topic, every single poem. Hmm. They just know how to reword it. And, and they, they, they just spam that. And that's, that's what works. And I'm like, I, I, I tend not to do that. And so, so I'm like, okay, well, that means I'm playing a much longer game and I, I, I'm not going to be able to blow up as fast as that. So I guess considering all that, you know, I, I think I was, I was doing all right. And then I had issues where they kept putting, uh, my war, what comes after book in the erotica section. <laughs> I kept having to call them up and, and, and tell them, no, move it out of that section. And, and I, I know why, because like, there's like one or two poems that are, are, are they're kind of erotic, but they're not erotica. Yeah. They're, they're, they're just erotic because, because like, like the, the style and the way they're, they're written, but they're, they're also about psychology and, 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 and human nature and stuff. Like it's, there's, there's, there's a lot of other factors into it. And, and, and that, um, that, that presents a few challenges, but then I also notice, um, and I think they've gotten stricter over the years with, with the uh, um, the genres that you can put your books in, um, because I, I was testing out the genres, and I I even paid for a service to 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 that that pulls all the data and everything, and organizes it so I can I can see what's happening in the genres, and um, I, I I I don't like to like to um, categorize my stuff as it, but I put it as Asian American because. You know, I'm part of Asian. And then and the next thing you know, I see all these books flood into the Asian American section. And I'm looking at these authors and stuff. The book's not anything about Asian American stuff. And the authors have not they're not Asian American, at least as far as I see. Hmm. And 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 I'm like, and I, I don't necessarily like blame them. Like, 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 you know, pe- people are trying to make a living and trying to figure out how the game works. And, and then I noticed all the all the Asian people, all their books got pushed to the bottom of the pile. <laughs> and so you got these non-Asians at the top of this Asian American section uh, for a short while. <laughs> and and um, yeah, yeah, it gets it gets competitive, like when having to move your books around the the genres in in, in Amazon. But I I think they 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 because it used to be like five sections you could put it in. Now they they 
they only let you put in like two or three uh, uh, genres, and they they don't they're not as loose um, anymore. Oh, you mean like the category listings? Yeah, the category listings. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. Yeah, I, I think it's three right now. Um, I don't believe I was on there when it was at five. Yeah, I was on there when it, it was it was five. Very cool. And and the other thing too is like you you're also competing with people that have really large um, email lists mm-hmm. from when uh, Amazon uh, first really blew up, and, and some of these people they're they're still active. Yeah, and um, like I tried building an email list, but um, it it. it it was it was still late in the game that, that I realized oh it's it's going to take time to build up a, a list like that I'm going to have to try like like another another angle. It does. Um, to, yeah. You can buy email lists. That's an option. You know that 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 is that's what may happen uh, may happen um, at, at some point. I, I do know, like, like, like the for the trade commission, like, there's limitations with the email list. And I know people doing things are not supposed to. I mean, right. I, I don't report it because, because I get it. You know, you know some of these are, they're small people. They're just trying to find a way to make a living. Right. Like there are countries that have restrictions on those things, um, in terms of like spam email and stuff like that. I know Canada does. Yeah. And then like, and the thing too, is like, I know like, like per trade commission, like, like when you get someone on the, on the email list, if you want them on another email list, that's somewhat, uh, different, like, like you, you, you gotta like, you gotta get the permission all over again. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I, I know not, I know there's a lot of people that, that don't do that, but you know, it's, it's, it's whatever. Yeah, I've always been kind of against that myself, but it is something that I have experienced, you know, with my email from people where it's like, oh, yeah, I gave you a business card. Why did I end up on this mailing list? I didn't I didn't ask for that (laughs) at all. Or then you get an email from somebody and their stuff gets aggregated some way and then you start getting spam from some third party that you just have no relationship with at all. Chrissy, I want to ask you while you're here hanging out about your process of writing videos and how that might have some connection to traditional screenplays or not really. I am terrible at writing. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I mean, I used to write stories and love it all the time, but then ever since I started doing the AI films, it's like such an interesting thing because I guess because you have to be so fluid, I kind of write an outline and then sometimes even at the start, it's just an idea. Yeah. And probably writers go through a similar thing where they're scratching out ideas, but for me, I have to visually see it. So now I'm in this like my editor's timeline has become my my notepad <laughs> and I constantly add scenes, remove them. If I have locked in something that I like, then I'll start working on the dialogue for it. But I generally don't have like a tight script or even even a full idea of dialogue until I've kind of visually saw where I'm going and, and how it's working. Oh yeah. Good. Which Perfect. Is interesting. That's the same way I work. So yeah, I did start out writing like full film treatments and everything dialogue and everything. And I would spend like on the runway. So back in February, I was still doing it that way. Like on the runway competition, I spent like we had, you know, Saturday or Sunday or whatever. I spent until Sunday afternoon writing my script and then I just ditched it all. Damn. Yeah. Like, I mean, I did the whole thing, like a whole idea, treatment, dialogue, everything, but it just doesn't work out that way for my process. And because it's AI, I'm sure, you know, if I was spending money and having to get the shots and the dialogue that I want, I would obviously, it's more about planning at that point. So I really would have it all. 
written out that way first. You know, I, I do I do consider that a type of writing any um anyways, because like um the, the whole thing with how you're supposed to write a script, I mean that's that's Hollywood's version of how you do it. Like like if if you're if you're writing just a just a basic, I guess, just timeline of events or whatever, I mean that's and, and then you could just go off of that um for for making your film and everything. I mean that's that's still writing. Um I, I I don't I don't dis discredit that. Um like you know with, with with writing balls up, like there's there's a lot of stuff I'm just I'm just kind of ignoring because I don't care because I'm not writing it for Hollywood. I'm not trying to sell it to, to Hollywood. Yeah now, now if I were then yeah there there'd be there'd be changes I would make to um to kinda kinda fit that and and, and please them but uh, it it is what it is. I um, I think I I don't think you think writing full on things is the only approach or or type of of valid form of writing. And there's a lot of times when a script is getting rewritten on the set, or an actor might ad lib something, and that makes it into the final cut as well. So I think being able to be flexible about, you know, good writing is good writing. I mean, there's lots of people that are putting together excellent dialogue and, um, and scenes and stuff like that where they fleshed it all out in advance and it translates into whatever medium it finds itself to. Um, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to say that that isn't happening, but at the same time, like, you know, as Chrissy was saying with AI video, there's some things that just don't get manufactured the way you see it in your mind. And you kind of have to be, you have to deal with the plastic nature of the media in that way. I, I view it as having some similarities to like techniques such as, you know, like blackout poetry where where you you have like articles or set of articles or books or whatnot and you you go through and you 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 black out until you get the the poem that you you want and and you're working off of stuff that's that's kind of predetermined um and 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 that's to me that's that's still writing it's just a different uh technique or or um approach to, to writing even though you didn't um literally put the the ink on the uh the um the paper or at least with words all um, you did was just black things out yeah i'm not totally sure i'm familiar with that phrase what else can you tell us about what that means yeah so so they call it blackout poetry because let, let's say we have um a couple paragraphs um that someone else wrote right then i would go through and i would just black out a ton of that writing and it kind of like a puzzle and then um what's left that i decide not to black out um that would form the uh the poem okay. and um yeah, a lot, a lot of, a lot of writers they get together and they do this and they do it with anything, anything that's got got words. They might do it with other poems, or they might do it with the most boring essay that they can find, or they might do it with a with a movie script. It doesn't matter to them. And and to me, that's 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 more like taking like the 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 puzzle approach where you have things that are already kind of done and completed. But now you're just kind of taking it and you're reshaping it and you're kind of um, editing out what you, what you don't want. And then at the end, you, you, you still got um, this this um, th this whole piece that, that kind of kind of comes together. Um, it's it, it's kind of like a collage in, um, in a way, but with um, with writing. Yeah, that's pretty cool. What's up, Chris? Oh, you know, another beautiful day in paradise. Uh, just living the good life here in Binghamton, New York. Um, yeah. 
Nothing really going on. Just uh, putting edits together and getting stuff out the door so I never have to see it again. And hopefully as soon as possible. Yeah, it's a quiet day. You know, it's uh, a little overcast here. Uh, I think it rained earlier this morning because I saw some water on the plants when I was out. But, yeah, I don't know. It's it's not too hot, but it's a little humid. So it's not um, like you don't. It, it's just like just above where it would feel not warm. I think if it weren't so humid, if there was a breeze. It might feel kind of cool. It's not too bad. Just one goddamn breeze. I'll take it. It's free and disgusting here. It's, uh, I mean, I don't know what your, your version of humid is, but I am not a person who enjoys any type of moisture whatsoever. Um, my God, uh, I would, I would give anything to be in a, a dry climate right now. Um, but, you know, it's also, um, I'm grateful it's not hotter, uh, you know, and that's one of the things like kind of the last couple of days. I'm also glad that it's a quieter day. It's not like extremely hot or cold because like, and getting anything done in that type of fucking temperature is for the goddamn birds. Um, cause I'm getting way more done today kind of passively than I was like even actively trying to get anything done where I'm just like thinking about how hot it is. <laughs> the heat doesn't bother me so much humidity can if it's just like incredibly thick uh i mean that's just kind of the nature of it around here but i do like the desert i've found that to be that nice dry heat very uh lizard terrarium like um there's there's a service now that uh can read any book and it, 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 it's saying that you never have to buy an audio book again. And all, all oh, you disappeared for me. Oh, geez. Look at that. That was funny. Uh, here, come on back up. I don't know why you got uh, kicked down, but I know Apple books had implemented, uh, a reader. Am I alive? Yeah, you're back. I know Apple Books, as I was saying, has implemented an like AI reader for any book that you have on the platform. But also Apple Books has audiobooks. And like you could have your iPhone or your computer read the book for you anyway. It just was not maybe necessarily as emotive as you might like or expect from an audiobook experience. Yeah, I I I I tried those those readers and they they, they just sounded like a, a bunch of robots to me. Yeah. 100%. I wonder if this one sounds like more more uh human like I guess. And you just pay like a monthly subscription. I guess it's you know it's like it's like paying someone to read you bedtime stories. <laughs> That's the way I see it. Yeah, there's, um, and you know, that's why I try to basically now I produce my audio books in tandem with the paperback. So I use it as a way to kind of proof the final manuscript before I send it through to Amazon KDP. Um, so I record that and then I have it available to do editing along the way and can kind of follow up the paperback release pretty rapidly. But I would say that, yeah, I, you know, I've done a couple of books with the old school, just iOS reader, and it was terrible. You know, it was like, it was basically the, <laughs> uh, the worst possible audio experience you could tolerate. And that sucks because that's like their accessibility feature. So, I mean, if that's just a total drag for people that have to utilize that. And I think that if they can, it, it, you know, it wasn't really much better than Siri, which hadn't had any major updates in a long time. And if accessibility is supposed to be a priority in any sense, at least make it a good experience. I mean, 
good Lord, it's already enough of a detriment to have to use those kind of tools or have an accessibility issue. It's like, man, it doesn't take that much more as we're seeing now to make this stuff markedly better (laughs) than, um, than that, which is, I don't feel like had really made any major jumps from the nineties when you could make your computer just talk words, which was amazing then, you know, but 20 years is a long time. Yeah. But I mean, that's the other thing. Generationally, that's kind of how everyone grew up with it. And so, you know, it's one of those things that if they can get somebody can get away with it, they can get away with it. Because there are people I know who don't care for inflection and stuff. They just want to kind of hear the thing. Um, depends on the book also. It depends on the person. But, you know, I always think about, like, whenever we think about experiences and stuff, it's like I always think about what Benny said about, like, you know, but well, we're not everybody and demographics are changing. And I'm like, yeah, but that's – and then I feel like an old man. And I'm like, it's so wildly different from what I'm used to. And it's like, yeah, I remember people saying the same shit to me about the internet. Like, oh, it's so wildly different than what I'm used to. And it's like, yeah, you know, and I didn't, it, I, I think maybe that's the two and two to put together. Is there's, if there's a way to make it happen in every which way, why not use every which way? Why not have like a good copy? If you buy it, you get a choice of whatever copy you get. You know, the good like listening experience, the auto uh, read experience. You never know. Maybe people might go for one over the other. Here's an interesting addition to that as well. So you had recommended Metamorphosis to me, and I found three audiobook versions. So I'm listening to all three and just doing... Uh, a comparison basically of the productions and the reads. So I'm doing all three versions. I've, I've listened to two so far and I'm a good piece of the way through the third one now and finding, finding that to be interesting to compare. Hey, look, somebody was able to get in here. I'm, I've gotten two people to tell me now that the space is not available for them. Um, unfortunately, but, uh, it looks like, it looks like it is available for some people. Very exclusive club here today. Uh, welcome. You're, you're free to come on up. I'll pass you an invite. We're just talking, uh, about E well, I guess it's like audio readers, uh, audio books and things like that. Yeah. What's up nuclear? You know, I, um, I, I think it's true that, uh, that, that there's a lot, a lot of people that when they uh, have something read to them, they, they do want like a little bit more robotic kind of monochrome. Like, and, and I think it depends on mood too, stuff like that, um, especially if it's at the end of the day. Like I, I don't, I don't want to hear some super excited person reading this this audio book like that's that's draining to me i'm like man i I, i'm dealing with super excited people um all the time during the day i I don't want to hear that anymore i want monotone give me monotone and keep it keep it simple for me so my brain can um can follow what what the hell is uh is going on so i i do think having choices is good because now, I I haven't done any audio books for my writing. When when I was about to do it, that was definitely something I was thinking about having a more excited version, and then having a more kind of kind of monotone and subdued version. Here's something that I do with my audiobook productions: is I will do a straight narration read, and then for the fiction material, let's clarify that I'll do uh, just a straight narration read. And then I'll do a voiced read with sound effects and stuff like that, kind of soundscaping out the story. And I like that. I think that like it gives a listener uh, at least those two kind of experiences for it. To me, that is uh, fun to make, but then additionally digging up all those assets and being able to 
have them on hand um, for other purposes is also useful in the long term. Yeah, I, I like that because then it, it almost uh, becomes kind of like a a radio play mm -hmm. um, in a way, and that 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 can also be an exciting um, um, experience, I think. So yeah, there's a couple of terms I use the. I use the term audio play, but radio play is obviously like the oldest term for it. And now what I'm hearing it get referred to is audio drama. If there's like multi-voiced productions with sound effects and, and music and stuff like that. So they're calling them audio dramas. And I like that term a lot. Actually, I think that one's pretty cool. I participated in a podcast series that is an audio drama that is supposed to be releasing its last three episodes. Uh, hopefully I think they're doing it this year. My episode came out very early this year, like January or February. I don't remember exactly when, but it was, it was put out and it was cool to participate in, you know, obviously, you know, my read was done, you know, locally with nothing besides just the script. I didn't have anything to work off of at the time. Um, besides just kind of what I perceived about the character and the script, they, I don't think they had anything else produced for that episode at the time, but then to see everything kind of get built around that was cool. It was, it was nice to, to see someone do it. You know, I mean, audio drama, radio play, whatever. I think it's, I always like that the experimentation with that type of, uh, of brand is interesting. And did you ever hear uh, when Udio, and they got Udio to do comedy? Like, did you ever hear when somebody got it to do that? Was it the George Carlin stuff? No, no, no. I'm saying somebody straight up prompted Udio, which only makes music. Mm -hmm. um, to do stand-up comedy and write its own jokes. Mm. And it was done in a way where it was extremely believable. And it was not funny, but it was very... It did have, like, joke structure and everything. And it was done through a prompt. And, like, people have tried... I think they've patched around it. But I think something like that is entirely, like, close um, to doing it, to doing, you know audio dramas in that way as well. Um, you know, cause I think there would be, you know, cause we almost do it now with like text to speech, but uh, being able for it to write its own kind of audio drama would be so interesting. And I've seen, you know, music generators do different voices. So it would make sense that it'd be possible. Um, but that's something that, I mean, I'm interested to see how that goes. Cause that'd just be crazy to be able to do for And it's such a niche use, but I think it is, like a cool thing, like the ASMR type of feel to it, where you don't have to necessarily watch something. You're just paying attention to something, you know, it's, it's just, it's great. Okay. Honestly, I'd probably have some fun ordering around the, the AI to create audio dramas for me. And, and then just sitting back and then um, be, being like a dungeon master and just throwing random things in. And I'll, I'll just have all the characters kind of predetermined and stuff. I mean, I'll yeah. tell you, bro, yeah. that is literally the future of all of this AI stuff. There are so many things I'm testing that are very much in line with something like that. And it's, it's what is like, you know, the on-demand content type of thing. That's really, it's going to be a sector. It's not going to be the whole fucking thing, but it's 100% going to be a genre. And it's going to be one of those things where, like you said, like whatever universe is the, the IP is bought into, you know, just like make it happen, make the world richer, you know, expand it. Like it'll be your, it'll be your imagination inside that world. And it's pretty fucking cool. I've seen a couple of examples that are interesting. So, uh, you know, that's, that's, and that's coming right around the corner and it's not going to be like compute, you know, oriented. It's going to be like just a service you pay for and, it's pretty fucking cool. Yeah, I, 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 I'm in agreement with that. Like self-tailored kind of, kind of storytelling. Like you, you can tell when you're reading like all these reviews for, for, for the past like two decades from all these comments on social media about like anything that the overall trend was self-tailored uh, storytelling. 
And, and, uh, and you know, I think part of that is social media kind of kind of pushes pushes that because because everyone can can uh, has more of an opportunity to voice their their opinion these days. But then, you know, I, I think people getting kind of afraid of that. Um, it, it, I, I think I think people are kind of overthinking it because you're all. I think there's there's always going to be um, um, some group of people that th- that they're not only um, interested in, in the tailored storytelling, but they're interested in watching uh, storytelling to to kind of see other perspectives and what other people put together, and not just like what they they want. And I think those people are always going to exist as well. But yeah, no, I, I do think that's going to kind of be the new wave of authorship is like that, that type of environment um, where the social and the creative are going to kind of merge into one where it'll finally be very like, if you want to talk about creator led, it's going to be only creator led businesses. are just going to basically support whatever creator led just like works out the best. And I think that's a that's a future of whatever social adopts that. That's what it's going to be like, you know. And and because the idea is that with combined with like established IP, you know, it's the same thing like every single forum message board. You know, you go. I, I have friends who are juggalos, and you know, when they tell me they go to a juggalo fest. It's like who can now juggalo the other juggalos, and that's literally how they roll. And it's you know it's one of those things where if that were an on-demand content creation system, they would be supporting each other literally to do that very thing, where it would be just like juggalos supporting juggalos about juggalo stuff, and I'm like it's it's kind of the way I see all of culture is going to end up is the whatever your interests are, you're going to surround around that and whoever from that is going to create content within it. And it's going to be high level stuff. And I think that within that environment is like, that's where success will lie, but it's going to be smaller. It's not going to be like epic, you know? And I think we kind of found that with Satari and stuff like that. I think that's, Really, something that was eye-opening to me was like that's a that's a small niche that could have a very big effect. Um, so, and it's crazy how it like kind of the fallout of that effect it verges into so many other territories too. I think it'll be this would be the comparison I would draw is that you know when you go to a fast food place and they have the a uh, pop dispenser that you can like mix flavors to that's i think where content is going to go in that you can like pick your brand your major brand say like sprite or coke or dr pepper or i don't know whatever else is in there and then you can mix in like a fruit flavor or if you want you can like put half of one combination in and then half of something else in and get these very unique stylized personalized experiences in that way i think ai will work like those pop dispensers i always like the slurpee analogy because it's similar um it's whatever slurpee you have you have three different options you mix you match that's the magic of using a slurpee machine you just do why choose one and if you're going to choose one, you always choose the right one, which is Coca-Cola. And it's like, it's all, it's all part of the scene, bro. But yeah, I, I feel it, exactly. It's one of those things. And, you know, even despite that, people still buy bottles of soda, uh, pop, whatever. You're in the Midwest. I keep forgetting. Um, so people still buy that shit either which way. You know, it's not like it's, oh, while well, dispensers exist. I can get it in the most like robust way where it's the freshest bubbles and those syrups are mixed properly. Maybe if you're in a good spot and I could drink as much of it as I want, but I'm still going to buy a bottle for home, you know? And that's, you know, that's why I, I can't, any innovation, it only just opens up another sector to sell to and another reason to sell to that sector. It's, you know, and that's why I think that's, that's it's going to be a good thing, even though it's going to be scary as fuck for a lot of people. I'm not complaining. I like those machines. Um, content for me, I'm less interested in 
personalized uh, consumption, I guess. I'd rather just watch something that someone made that, you know, they're like, this is the version. I, I appreciate that uh, process and that finality of it. But now as a creative, I like the idea of making something that's very dynamic that people could just turn into whatever they want in that way uh, or get it more personalized. Not maybe, maybe not necessarily turn it into whatever they want. I think I misspoke there, but having some capacity to inflect uh, upon the assets or participate in the trajectory of the story, the arc of the narrative as it is. Did you ever, did you ever play Fallout New Vegas? <laughs> what are you kidding me? Exactly. That's how it's going to be, bro. It's exactly how it's going to be. Because that wasn't you kidding me. Yes, right. That wasn't you kidding me. No, right. Yeah, I send you. I always send you stuff on Fallout New Vegas. Just making sure. Just making sure. I was. I was pretty sure of this, but I. I was like, I just drew a blank for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Nuclear. I saw you raise your hand. Yeah, I, I was thinking it'd be kind of like Fallout New Vegas mixed with some of the older D and D kind of stuff, and then mixed with something like The Sims, where there's a little bit, you know. The, the automation kind of part and then um and kind of like a an ad farm all that mixed together yeah i would say that is probably accurate and that that will be at least for some things i think we see it most prevalently currently from game developers obviously bethesda kind of owns that that space as they have like elder scrolls online and fallout 76 they can they can continue to do um dynamic things with their assets and their ip and keep kind of rolling out new story components that people are i would say generally linearly moving through but they're individual experience is unique hey what's up gonzalo come on up yeah i definitely think i agree with you on that i think what's interesting is I've, i'm playing the the game after that that they made um outer worlds and it's very much like you know you appreciate where bethesda went as just as much as you appreciate where friggin uh what was it black isle was you know so it's one of those things and i what i really like about that balance and i think one of the reasons why i think this is going to catch on really fast with storytelling is the outcomes like that was the big thing about that game about new vegas was the outcomes mattered like when you took an actual decision you saw every single thing that you missed get failed like right in front of you which like people thought was a bug but I think it also made you go like, Oh, I want to play this game again. <laughs> like, right. Holy shit. What is all that? Like I, you're missing things. Cause you're trying to like focus on, cause it happens instantly. Yeah. You, you know, and it's do just everything like, and no. play through. And they, and that's a thing. That's a great way of making you want to do that again, because it like, and, and I think they get too soft about it these days, like four and 76, they don't have any of that shit. But, you know, that's a thing that should really be part of that experience is like what the outcomes are of these fucking things. For Fallout because particularly, I think it's integral to that um, brand. At least it was from the original developers. Well, yeah, because that ecosystem, the economy, that whole thing is very delicate. Like even what you do in Vegas, like I can't wait to see what they do about it. Um you know, anything going forward. I don't know if anyone knows about anything like that. Just uh, didn't want to ruin it for anyone. Um, but yeah, whatever they do about that going forward, like it'll be very interesting to see how they play off of that whole situation. And like where, where they take it is also going to be very interesting because like now there's, there's other outcomes that you don't even get to have seen in the game. That would have been, you know, that would just be amazing. But, you know, and that's the other thing. All the other, you know, all the other games don't make you regret a decision as much as you're happy with the decision. Um, 
and then also scum saves like that's that's another whole fucking situation gonzalo what's up you're hanging out hey michael yeah sorry i i, I thought i was gonna i wasn't gonna make it just so it was just a super slow morning and kind of crazy around here at a late lunch <laughs> yeah because it's just three o'clock now i just got out of uh, got back from lunch my my wife and kids are, are all home so the schedule's been kind of crazy and I just didn't see the notification. I haven't been on my phone. All good. Yeah, you some people good? couldn't even get in anyway. So it was telling them that the space was unavailable. So we've been dealing with glitches. Happy to have you hanging out. Well, yeah, happy to have you. Happy that I made it at least uh, to, you know, uh, for, like, for the last part. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you have anything you want to promote. I know your uh, campaign wrapped up this morning, but... No. Actually, you know, Solana has come out with this new thing called Blinks. Uh, it's a it's a blockchain link where if you have this setting activated on your on your Phantom wallet, you can just uh, like uh, the the link. Uh, if if the page that you're linking to is participating and has it uh, activated, and Cubic has done done this, um, what you see on your in your Chrome nav- uh, browser is instead of the link instead of the preview image you see a donation page directly in the in the feed which is kind of amazing uh so they decided to extend it a few more hours until tonight at eight i think it's 8 p.m i can't remember if it's 8 p.m my time or 8 p.m eastern i'm getting confused now but it's somewhere around there i think it's 8 p.m eastern if i'm not mistaken Uh, yeah yeah because it's midnight midnight utc so yeah it's 8 p.m eastern uh, so that's it. so I made one last little one last little um, post that I'm probably gonna repost once or twice before the nights before the day's over. Uh, so, yeah, just to, you know, just to have that like last last chance if anyone wants to get in, they're gonna secure a copy of the manga for themselves when it comes out. It's very exciting uh, science fiction thriller. Um, so if anyone's interested in checking it out, the you know in the about section, the the about section has everything. Um, on there if you like if you want to see the the actual project page you can see it from my bio to get into go into the cubic page but if you want to just go and donate like the, the cool thing about the blink is that you can just donate directly from 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 that um, that tweet which is really cool gonzalo does a space on tuesday evenings that is the writer's room it's kind of a workshop space so he is his space is where i go to kick around ideas when they're in their very early stages yeah it's it's so it's a lot of fun it's it's very selfish really because i I just love geeking out (laughs) about stories and last night we worked on uh one of my stories uh we um i always i always give the the crowd the the um what's the word uh like the first dibs but uh, when no one raises their hand, I'm like, all right, well, let's just do one of mine then. And uh, we fleshed out a lot of in- interesting details for the for the villain in this manga story that, that I'm going to be bringing out, uh, who's going to come in they, like in the following issues. Uh, not going to be an issue one, because, you know, in the first issue, the, 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 the real bad guy is kind of in the shadows, right? So we, we worked that out, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I, that's fair. I would say, you know, you should get to take advantage of the resource as well. You know, you're providing the space. So if every so often you get to make some advanced progress with, with what you're doing and we get to see inside of it, you know, that's, that's a bonus. Yeah. It's, I mean, and when I say selfish, I don't, I don't mean like the times that I get to talk about my stories, which is an advantage, right? Cause I got a lot of value out of last night. I uh, got some interesting insights, you know, heavy hitters like MJ and, and, um, and Danny and Ricky, they, they gave me some really interesting things to think about, but really what I mean is just that like the space itself is fun for me. Like I, I enjoy sitting down with people, even if it's not my story, like listening to their, to, to their ideas and trying to figure out how to make it work and, and, you know, figure out a climax or, or some turning point or something like that. Um, it's, 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 it's fun. I, I just, I just like it. I just like doing it. So it's kind of selfish for me that way. And, uh, and people seem to enjoy it. Yeah. Very cool. Well, any last thoughts or comments or topics from anybody hanging out? 
I think I'm good, I guess. Uh, I just got here, so I don't know if I can have last thoughts, but um, I, I, I'm going to I do my best to make it on time the next time. All good. Yeah. Uh, like I said, a bunch of people, I would assume, are getting an unavailable notification because a few people told me that it was for them. Uh, you know, luckily <laughs> we didn't want yeah. it anyway. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. I'm it's, it's always better when there's, uh, other people having the discussion instead of me. I'm just kind of facilitating. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, you know, be good and we'll be back in two weeks. Hopefully the issues with the technology won't be carrying over till then. And we'll talk before too long.